Hello, 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 and thank you guys for joining me. My name is Jake Berlin, and this is the first official episode of the Whiskey Jedi podcast. Um, something that I have had an idea for for quite a long time now. Um, you know, I've, I've, it's been in the mind. It's been in the works. It's, it's something that I've creatively wanted to do for a, uh, a while, and I've now had the official time to do it. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of us out there have quite a bit of time to do. Um, if you did not catch my introductory episode, which I did about you know five to eight minutes or so, kind of covering what this show and channel is going to be about, um, I'll do a little quick recap <clears throat> for you guys right now. Excuse me. Um, the Whiskey Jedi. What is the Whiskey Jedi? Now, first of all, I absolutely love Star Wars. Star Wars is a massive piece of my life. Um, I have a huge passion for it in every sense, whether that's movies, film, or uh, excuse me, movie, television, um, books, comics, toys, merchandise, shirts. I mean, it could be anything in Star Wars. Uh, you guys see some stuff behind me there. Um, I got the Return of the Jedi poster. I got my Bubba Fett and uh, seeing the reflection of Han and Carbonite um, uh, canvas up there. You know, there's going to be a lot of things that are featured on this show that, that you know, come from a Star Wars love of mine. Um, and it's always been that way, you know. I, I I don't know what it is about Star Wars, but it just it has always caught with me, and um, that continues and it grows. It honestly, it really does. It grows uh, constantly, and that's with everything that comes out, whether it's good or bad, because it creates conversation. I just I just love talking about it, and that's exactly why I wanted to do the show because it's a different kind of outlet for me to discuss Star Wars. Um, you may recognize my name, you may recognize my voice. That is because I'm also a part of another Star Wars podcast, which I absolutely love. That is the Padawan podcast over on Apocalypse Movies. Um, a lot of that is dedicated to movies and television. Uh, we touch on some books and comics there, and this show is going to be very different. It's going to focus on a lot of other things. Um, there might be one character I focus on an entire episode, and I might break it down biography-wise or you know their themes or their, their faults and their strengths and stuff like that. And it's just going to be a totally different feel for Star Wars. But the other addition to that is obviously in the name, the Whiskey Jedi, right? Um, over the last year or so, I've really become a fan of trying and tasting other whiskeys and kind of getting that flavor for it. And I had this bright idea, whether um, it's good or bad, it's something that, you know, is creative to me and very interesting to me of combining the two and not just talking about Star Wars because let's face it, right? There's a dozen, um, well, more so than a dozen, there's probably about five dozen different Star Wars um, podcasts and shows that you know of or may listen to. Um, and so what could I do to make me a little different from those outside of just my opinions? And that's to bring whiskey involved, right? I'm going to, on each episode, I will be highlighting a whiskey that is in my arsenal that I'm going to be trying. Some I have had before, some I have not. Um, just, you know, I started off today with a very popular brand that I have not had before. It was given to me as a gift. Um, you guys can probably see right behind me over my shoulder there, I have uh, an array of them that I'm going to be featuring here on the show. And I won't just be saying like, oh, they're good. Like, that's, that's boring, right? Um, I'm going to go over where they're from. I'm going to go over what type. I'm kind of going to break it down through... Through the episode not just part of the episode kind of takes take breaks here from star wars and talk about this part of it um and you know so if you're if you're a whiskey lover if it's something that's um if you've always wanted to try whiskey and you love star wars and this is the perfect show for you i'd love for you guys to join me uh you know send me a picture on social media of you guys drinking a glass and listening to the show or something like that and um like i said this, this thing is it's just for me to discuss star wars and have fun doing it. i'm not looking to um Get a million followers right away or anything like that i there's so much conversation going on in my own head about star wars and i tweet about it constantly and um it's all over my social media it's just a perfect place for me to do it because i can take an hour sit with you guys um, whether you're listening or watching and um have fun talking star wars so i'm very excited about it um, as far as where it's going to be and when um the when is going to be on wednesdays now the reason why is because it just made sense whiskey wednesdays um, it's in the middle of the week. It's kind of the perfect little time frame. Uh, this, this episode dropped on Monday, May 4th. And that is because obviously it is Star Wars day. Uh, it's a celebration of the franchise in its entirety. And I felt like it was necessary to do so. Now, whether or not there's an episode this Wednesday, two days from now, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, there may very well be with Clone Wars ending and some things I can talk about. 
Uh, but for now, after this episode, it will live on Wednesdays. Um, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, you can search my name, Jake Berlin, or the show itself, The Whiskey Jedi, and it'll pop up. Or you can find us, uh, or myself, on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Breaker, anywhere you can find um, podcast platforms, it lives. And that is all thanks to Anchor and, you know, just the way they operate. They're they're really brilliant um, in the way they, they help uh, creators out in doing that. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the gist. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions... Um, maybe I didn't answer anything in uh, this specific episode. Check out that previous one I did. I kind of did a, like I said, a full eight minutes or so. I'm um, just kind of talking about the idea behind it and what's going to be, what it's going to be about. Um, if I didn't answer anything in that that you're wondering, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you guys, uh, whether it's about whiskey or Star Wars or just anything in general. Um, I'm happy to answer that. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk to Star Wars and it's going to be a little bit of a celebration today for Star Wars. I got my my brand new Anakin from the Clone Wars hoodie on. Um, if you, you know, it looks familiar. This is his outfit in the series. Um, really, really cool from Ashley Eckstein's uh, clothing line. Uh, super pumped that I got it for for the last couple episodes. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be celebrating my own little Star Wars fandom. And it's it's kind of just going to be covering a bunch of different things today. Mainly my favorites and, and loves of certain uh, media. So, you know, my favorite movie, my favorite book, favorite comic, character, um you know, score, that type of stuff. I'm just going to be running through a bunch and and expressing what uh, it is about Star Wars that I love so much. And that's going to be highlighted through the things that I love the most in certain medias uh, or mediums, excuse me. Um, and so I'm very excited. It's, you know, we do it all the time, whether we're with friends or whatnot. And I think it's, it's the perfect way to celebrate not just May the 4th and Star Wars Day, but my inaugural episode of the Whiskey Jedi podcast. So, um, just to start it off here, as far as the whiskey goes, I have it right here, and I am drinking today. I have Redemption Bourbon, um, a very, very uh, sweet bourbon that comes from Indiana. Um, that's all I'll say about it now. We'll touch on it a little bit later in the show. Uh, but as far as favorites in Star Wars, now, I teetered back and forth with myself a little bit about if I should start with the big stuff or finish with the big stuff or kind of, you know, spread out a little bit. And I figured... You know what? Let's swing for the fence right away, and we'll just talk about the movie, right? This is how Star Wars started. It started through the movies. Um, there were no comics or books or or even toys when the movies came out, right? It was just a film, and uh, so it, it just seems like the perfect way to start that. And I, there, tr truthfully, as a Star Wars fan, there really shouldn't be a bad Star Wars movie. Of course, we're not going to like every single one of them. Um, in my opinion, there's not a single bad Star Wars movie. Uh, they all have their strengths, and some of them have more weaknesses than others. Uh, but the one to me that has the least weaknesses, um, and it's not just my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, but it's my all-time favorite film of all time, that is The Empire Strikes Back. It's a cliche answer. I know. I get it. Everyone answers that. Um, but being the original trilogy, being how the film um, revealed some major things for the universe and characters... And how it kind of flipped the script on the original movie is are just a few reasons as to why it's so special to me. Um, obviously, one of the big things that a lot of people talk about is that it's one of the few movies that successfully um, not just ends on a darker note, but our heroes lose. You know, they're not the winners coming out of the movie. Uh, you know, and I wasn't alive back then. I'm, you know, I'm not... Uh, I wasn't lucky enough to experience those movies in theaters, um, but I could imagine that it was the first movie of its time um, or ever to do that. And that is, that's a very special thing. Um, it's very special. And there's a lot of things that inside the movie that I love itself. Obviously one, one of the, the things that I can talk about is my all time favorite um, scene sequence moment. Uh, another favorite that I'll be talking about is the no, I am your father moment. Um, that's the epitome of Star Wars. That's what Star Wars is built on. Uh, it's built on family. It's built on, um, you know, these characters coming to realization as to who they are. And that moment of Vader and Luke in Cloud City is the highlight of all those moments in this franchise. And so it's something that, you know, when you when you think of a movie and you think of, and what are my, what are some of my favorite all-time sequences, scenes, moments. How can you not include that movie in your all-time conversation if that's one of your all-time favorite scenes, right? Like, it would be weird to say, 
yeah, that movie has my all-time favorite scene in it, but it's not in my all-time favorite movies. It's just kind of a weird little statement there. And so for me, it just makes sense. Um, not to mention that uh, I just, I love that how the movie, it didn't just evolve on a film standpoint with technology and everything like that, but it completely, like I had mentioned earlier, completely turned the previous mil, previous film on Ted. It did a full 180 and and turned Star Wars into something that we couldn't believe was actually possible in 1977 to like, wow, they stepped it up that much more three years later. Um, and like I said, there's so many moments in the movie that you could you could look back on and be like, yeah, I mean, that's a, an all time great. It's an all time great moment. It's an all time great character line. It's just an all time great. And, you know, the I love you, I know sequences in the movie, of course. Um, the fact that our hero, uh, Han Solo, at the, I mean, back then, we know now, obviously, and, you know, being that there's so many movies, but back then, nobody knew that they were going to be making a, another, another movie. And you, you essentially, basically kill a main character in a horrific way. Um, and they do it successfully. And people are okay with it. I mean, just think about if they did that now, what social media would look like. And so, I can go on and on on about The Empire Strikes Back. I think it's a perfect movie. Um, there's very few of those for me, uh, but I do think it's an absolute perfect movie. Uh, through and through, character decisions, um, character development, the way that the story is written, the way the dialogue is, just everything about it is is so brilliant from start to finish. And it's something that can pop on uh, any day of the week or see on television, I instantly sit down and watch just because um, it is one of those few perfect movies for me. So, uh, but stepping away from Star Wars for here, just a quick bit. Let's go ahead and touch on this whiskey a little bit. So, uh, Redemption Bourbon, like I said earlier, this was given to me as a gift. Um, as the back of the, and let me pull up the bottle right here for you guys. So, it's right here Redemption Bourbon. Um, the back of the bottle, it's distilled in the Indiana Heartland. Um, and it is bottled by Redemption Barrel. And so it's aged no less than one year, which is a good sign for whiskey, obviously. And um, it's like I mentioned earlier when I first tasted it, it's a very sweet kind of whiskey. And if you're so if you're if you're a sweet drinker, um, it's something that's gonna go down a little bit smoother for you. It definitely has that bourbon taste for you, uh, which is always a good sign for me because it's one of my favorite styles of, of whiskey. There's a bunch of different styles, and we'll touch on those as we kind of go through the shows. Um, but let me read a little excerpt, excerpt, excuse me, excerpt uh, from Redemption's um, website, touching on the taste profile of this whiskey. And so it says the high amount of corn gives the bourbon a classic sweet taste with notes of vanilla and caramel from the wood, while the rye adds some light flavor. Um, bottled at 84 proof or a lighter experience, this bourbon is great on the rocks or in mixed drinks. Now I can tell you, I have it a rock. I typically drink it with a rock. Um, it definitely is a little bit of lighter whiskey, uh, but like I said, it has that nice sweet flavor, um, but it, it combines very well with the bourbon, and I didn't even taste it at first, but now that they say vanilla and caramel, I can definitely taste it in there. Um, it has this really, really cool crisp uh, taste to it, um, and so if you guys are able to get uh, your hands on a Redemption, if it's anywhere in the area, I highly recommend it. Um, very, very good whiskey, and I'm, I'm glad I it's the debut uh, on the show. I wasn't going to start with... Um, my, my favorite, my all-timer, uh, it's right back there on the table behind me. I'm not going to reveal it just yet because I don't know which episode I'm going to show it on yet. Um, I have a lucky number, and that might be the episode I do it on. Um, but this is definitely a good whiskey to start with because it, it has that nice sweet flavor, which always gives it a much more smoother uh, taste and uh, swallow for, for any of you who are not always a constant whiskey drinker. So uh, but let's get back to Star Wars, guys. Um, obviously, outside of the movies, we have some other big, big things, right? But I'm going to save those. Like I said, I'm kind of going to spread them out a little bit. So let me touch on some some small things just to, so you understand my Star Wars fandom and the things that I love about Star Wars. Now, the favorite species of mine, I have a lot of them. I really do. Uh, I, I've been saying for a long time now that Star Wars needs to put front and center an alien character. Uh, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a movie um, they do it in the comics and books, which is always nice, but on live action, um, in in front of the screen, you want, I would personally like to see the diversity of not just um, the race factor, but also the species factor. That's something I've been calling for for a long time. And my favorite species 
um, is a Taguta. And that that is a lot has a lot to do with um, one of my all time favorite characters in Ahsoka Tano. Um, not just because of Ahsoka, but I just I love the species. They're very rare in canon. We don't see a lot of them, right? We, the two that are kind of front and center most of the time uh, are the two Jedi that we know of, and so it's 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 just something that what whether I'm saying that we see a the Gruta front and center in live action movie or, or series that's you know that's that's up to the creators i want to see an alien period would i love to see it be a Tegruta? yes a hundred percent um luckily from all being said right now is it sounds like we're going to be getting a live action version again with ahsoka and mandalorian season two which is always a plus obviously um and i'll, I'll definitely have an episode up on her at some point that may be soon because of the end of the clone wars is is tonight or today actually by the time this episode comes out and so uh, that might be an episode I do very soon. But for now, uh, that is my favorite species. And it's more it's for more reasons than one. I might do a full episode on the Tugurtu. I'm not sure. They just they they feel like they're so uh, prestigious and mysterious in the same way. They feel like a very high class version of an alien. Um, and like I mentioned, they're not they're not represented very much, which is always a good sign in Star Wars because and I'm not saying it to this level, but look at a species like Yoda, right? We've only ever seen two live action versions of Yoda before we saw the child in the Mandalorian and look, look at the conversations that it's been happening with that. So I'm sure I'll get to that down the road once uh, Mando season two comes along. Um, but moving on from species, my favorite planet. Um, and this is a hard one because a lot of the planets that I really like, we haven't seen enough of. Um, we, we just, you know, like Agent Kloss, right? Like from Rise of Skywalker. What a great planet. An awesome planet. But we just, we've seen bits and pieces of it, correct? And so my favorite planet, keeping in mind that we've seen a good wholehearted enough of it, is Endor. I think Endor is such a um, interesting planet, not just because of the way it looks right with the forest and um, kind of how, and again, we've only seen small parts of this, but the species that live there with the Ewoks and, and some of the other native, we've learned some very interesting things about the planet in canon books and comics. Um, and so if you read those and you understand what I'm talking about, but I just think that uh, it's such a um, beautiful planet, but it's also such an important planet, um, not just because of a return of the Jedi and everything it held there. But like I mentioned, it's, it's been prominently featured in books and, and comics over the last four or five years. Um, and so if you've read those, you understand those stories. I can't get into too much detail. Maybe one day if I'm covering something, but um, it definitely feels like it's one of the more important planets out there. Maybe not to the extent of a Tatooine um, or a Yavin 4, obviously, which is the moon of Endor, but Endor just feels like it's very important. Uh, as my logo pops up, I'll make sure to pop that back on. As uh, for you, for your viewers, not the listeners, but I have a logo in the background. Um, and so, yeah, Endor is definitely something that um, definitely I would love to see more of, obviously, and maybe a different side of. But they, it is definitely, as of right now, because we haven't seen some of the others to uh, more, Endor is definitely my favorite planet. Uh, now, I'll, go, I'll touch on two more before I touch on something big. Uh, favorite era is the Old Republic. Um, I, I don't know what I would do if they announced an Old Republic. I know that they've announced it as I'm putting up air quotes, um, you know, in the past, but nothing has really moved on from it. Uh, but if they officially announced like, you know, just for example, I don't know, like a name, a writer, um, let's see a writer, writer, um, or how, how about this? I'll even do a director, like a, like an example, like if they announce one day Taika Waititi is directing an older public movie, like that's official, right? Like that feels official. That's going to happen. He's a big time director. Um, and that's a, that's like a statement announcement. Um, but when we got it, it's like, oh, old public movie in the works. That's just that's just saying like there's a script out there. They're having conversations. They want to make it happen, but they're not sure if it's going to happen. Um, old Republic is definitely the one thing I'm calling for right now. We're kind of getting closer there with with the High Republic, which is a good sign. And and whether or not that means good or bad things for the Old Republic, we'll see. But if I were to be given a chance to see anything in Star Wars. Like it was put on my desk, you know, Kathleen Kennedy sitting right above me and saying, hey, what do you want to see in Star Wars? I'm, I'm putting right on her face, Old Republic. Like I'm, I'm writing it, giving it to her, and I'm saying, make this happen. Um, and so that, that's something I would love to see in the future. Whether or not that happens, I'm not sure. It seems like it's a ways out, but uh, it's the one thing I for sure uh, want to see in Star Wars.
last one before I touch on something bigger. Uh, favorite lightsaber color? Um, and this is also has to do with um, what I said about the planets, about we've seen a few that uh, I love, but we just haven't seen enough of yet. Uh, my favorite is green at the moment. Uh, that is why my logo is green. Uh, for you viewers, if you are seeing the logo in the background, for your audio listeners, you're probably listen or seeing the actual uh, audio logo, which is cool. Uh, yeah, green green lightsaber is my coolest, and that is not just because my favorite characters, but when you know you can find all those meanings of lightsaber colors online, and the meaning and the representation of what green means, it just fits with me more. It it it's exactly why when I went to Galaxy's Edge, you know, you guys can see the lightsaber back there behind me. It's why I built that specific hilt. Um, the meaning and and what it stands for is what stands out to me the most. And it just so happens to line up with some of my favorite characters. And that, that I mean, they go with hand in hand with each other. And so that, that works out well. And, and so green is definitely my favorite. I mentioned the other two that, or the other ones that we haven't seen enough of. We've seen enough of one. And again, it, it goes back to one of my favorite characters, Ahsoka. White, I think white is so brilliant. Um, I have a white crystal uh, to go in that saber along with my green one. And I also have this color, which is yellow. Um, or you want to call it gold, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think yellow is a saber color that now that we've seen it with Ray could be... Um, and we've seen the concept art from High Republic, and uh, yellow is definitely something that's front and center. Uh, I believe um, the main character of Ava might have it. I'm, I might be blanking on this one. I'm not 100% sure. You guys can yell at me in the comments. Um, but I think yellow is a... a a very cool and crisp color and it stands for something that is very rare which is why and obviously going back you don't think like oh George Lucas wants to make all these um, colors but he only did a couple uh, it just feels like a color that's meant specifically for for a specific type of Jedi which is why it's so rare just like the white which is why we've only seen it with Ahsoka Tano in canon so far the white is so cool um, it also makes such a different sound compared to a lot of other ones. And I'm, I'm speaking more on my experience with these crystals and the sabers back here. Um, they all have a little bit of different sound, but the white one specifically has a very, uh, a much different sound compared to the others, which, you know, distinguishes it from the others, which is really cool. And so that, that is my favorite color, green. And then I can't really rank the other. I'll just say green, white, yellow, specifically on how much we've seen them. Um, but back to the big ones for favorites here. And obviously, right after movies, we're going to talk about series, right? Television shows. Now, we have three of them to talk about. Or well, four of them, excuse me. Um, we have three animated, and we have one live action. Uh, Mandalorian is the most recent one. Clone Wars is currently going on. Rebels ended two years ago. Uh, or actually, it might have just been the one-year anniversary last year. Um, no, I think it might have been two years ago. I'm not sure. And then uh, Star Wars Resistance. Um, and it's something against Resistance. You know, it's nothing against it, because I think it had a... Uh, it, it was kind of a slow build... But it definitely picked up in moments, um, good connections here and there. But it's my fourth out of the four, um, and then I have a very hard time with these with these going upwards. Now, this changes every every other day. Uh, I went back and found an image that I posted on my Twitter about what's your favorite Star Wars dot dot dot, and has a whole bunch of lists. And on this list, um, it says Star Wars Rebels, but that's not the case today. The case right now is the Clone Wars, um, and that is all thanks to what season seven has been doing lately. Uh, it is, it's not just elevated what the series is right now, but it's added depth to the previous seasons and episodes. Um, and it's connection to episode three is, is like, it's just brilliant. It really is. Um, episode three is my favorite prequel. And the fact that they're doing the connections they are and bringing the story as close as they are. Uh, it's truly everything you want from a star Wars fan, because out of all the franchises, and you know, Marvel does it brilliantly, but if out, of the, out of all the franchises, you want Star Wars to connect the most. And Dave Filoni, and the help of George Lucas, uh, what they've been doing with Season 7, specifically the Siege of Mandalore, is it's some of the best Star Wars storytelling you'll ever see. And it's exactly why I have shot that series up to my number one. Um, right now, because... Oh man, two and three is tough. Two and three is tough. Um, I will say, just because it's fresher, um, I will put Mandalorian to season two or Mandalorian at two and Rebels 
I'll put Mandalorian 2A and Rebels 2B. Like that's how close they are. But like I said, it changes every other day. This was this this post was just up a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago. And like I said, Rebels was was in the lead. Um, but since then, after watching uh, Clone Wars and after watching Mandalorian again, uh, I have it. I have those two right above Rebels. But again, if I pop in Rebels again and I watch, you know, the season season two finale or uh the the series finale it might shoot right up into number one but for right now during this episode clone wars is number one mandalorian is two uh rebels is three and resistance is four all right so some more canon stuff i can touch on here uh you know we always if we were to have a conversation about star wars the conversation of or the question of Favorite character always comes up. Um, that's hard. It really is because there's there's so many brilliant, brilliantly written characters in the galaxy, right? Um, whether it's the original trilogy, whether it's canon book, or um, something like Rebels, right? I've I've heard I've heard plenty of people talk about how Gar Saxon is their favorite character, and he's both in Clone Wars and Rebels, and he had that Son of Dathomir comic run with Maul where he broke him out and. Um, Maul could be considered a favorite character and his, most of his stuff comes from the Clone Wars and, um, you know, Kaz from Resistance for a younger generation, that's their favorite character. So it, it really depends for you on not just what you started with, but kind of what your favorite in Star Wars is as far as medium goes. Um, if you're a reader, you might have a favorite, a favorite character from a book or, you know, if you're a comic guy or, or lady, um, Dr. Aphra might be your favorite character and don't get me wrong. She's brilliant. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I can't wait to see her TV series because I know that's going to happen. Um, I do believe that that series announced with uh, Russian Doll Creator is in fact about her. Uh, but that'll, that'll be safe for a later date. Um, so for myself, it's definitely a toss-up in like the top three range. Uh, but my all-time favorite is the, another cliche answer. It's Luke Skywalker. Uh, Luke Skywalker is... Um, he is exactly what you want in a hero, right? That That is a bona fide hero um and it helps with the addition of something like the force awakens the last Jedi, and the rise of skywalker right is his his legacy is kind of solidified maybe not what not what we wanted obviously but it's still solidified solidified because of not just what he what he did but what he means to the galaxy um but as far as the original trilogy go it's the classic story of someone seeing something bigger for themselves and and living up to it but having to go through these difficult situations um it's it's a tale of victory it's a tale of revenge or redemption and you know redemption there you go redemption for the whiskey um so luke skywalker is to me i mean he, he's he's exactly what a hero should be um and a lot of that is thanks to where's more of my hand going this one this one this one uh that movie right back there um, in the throne room scene with Palpatine and Vader, or excuse me, the Emperor and Vader, that moment where he throws his saber away and says, no, Father, I will not fight you. That is a hero move. That is a hero through and through. You can't argue it no matter what, no matter what his journey was. He's exactly who he should have been. He's exactly what you want from a hero. Um, and watching that as a kid, watching it, watching Star Wars for the first time, uh, and seeing how the franchise has kind of, you know, wiggled its way through the years. Uh, he is the ultimate hero in Star Wars. No, without a doubt, the ultimate hero in Star Wars. Now, I mentioned beforehand, I was a couple seconds, a couple backups there. Um, this one, you know, you guys might yell at me for this one, but I absolutely adore Bubba Fett. I think Bubba Fett is, um, obviously he's very underused and underrated. We have not seen enough of him in canon, um, we have not seen enough of him in canon. We saw him as a young boy and teenager in the Clone Wars in the early on seasons. And he was supposed to have that season, uh, those episodes in the final season when they originally did them. Um, but as a uh, follower of Legends um, and artwork, obviously, I mean, you see that incredible piece of art uh, from Christian Wagner right up there. Um, he is just, I love the dude. He's awesome. He's such a badass uh bounty hunters in in star wars are so cool uh you see bounty hunters and you know hitman and mercenaries around in movie franchises all over the place and you feel like they can just never get it right uh except if they follow some beats from star wars right like the bounty hunters in star wars just have a different level to them um 
And Boba Fett is the elite of the elite. Nobody can touch him, right? Nobody can touch him. There's not a single person in the galaxy that's better than him. Um, yes, he died a ter terrible death that was very cheap and almost seemed too cheesy and easy. But the guy is just, like the stories that have been told with him and how he's portrayed in the comics and the books and elsewhere. Uh, I want to see that character on screen again. I hope one day that they do do that. And that would be pretty incredible because I would absolutely love to see um, a Bubba Fett uh, series or Bubba Fett movie. Not even not even that, excuse me. Not even that, a Bounty Hunter movie or series where he is featured, right? They have that Bounty Hunter comic going on right now, which is incredible, by the way. If, you, if you're a comic person you're, or even if you're not and you want a cool story, the Bounty Hunter comic going on in Star Wars right now is awesome. And he's featured in there. Um, and so Bubba Fett's up there. Obviously, a Han Solo is up there as well. Uh, I think uh, what Harrison Ford did with the character and how different the character was from everything else in Star Wars. Um, his lines are quotable in every situation, and you just love that, which is great. And so Han Solo is definitely up there. Uh, you can't ever uh, continue this conversation without talking about Leia. Obviously, a lot of people are going to have her up on the list, and I will never, ever argue with anybody on the planet that says Leia is their favorite character. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I love a Dr. Afra, and I have also mentioned that I love an Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tano. I think Ahsoka Tano, um, not just the way her story has been told, but uh, the, well, I guess it kind of does have to do with the way her story has been told. The storytelling around her has been brilliant, right? It's been absolutely incredible. But it's the way that they tell the story because we see everything through her eyes. Everything that she's in is her experience, and we're experiencing it as her, which makes her so important to the Star Wars galaxy. Um, a lot of, a lot of these characters that I mentioned, I may do single episodes on and touch on a bunch of different things, which, which will be on a later date. And if you guys have one specific that you want me to do, leave a comment, shout me out on Twitter or, or Instagram. And I can definitely do that and plan that out in the future. Cause I would love to, uh, but Ahsoka Tano, you know, every time I see more of her specifically right now with the clone wars, she, she continuously shoots up my list. Um, I just, I love what the character stands for. I love what the character stands for. Not just that, but she has come such a long way from where she started. And also the brilliant uh, voice acting from Ashley Eckstein and how she has portrayed the character from the direction of Dave Filoni. Uh, it's everything you want from a Star Wars character, specifically a Force user uh, who, yes, is not a Jedi um, later on in life, but she kind of is right now in the Clone Wars. Uh, you know, so-so. Um... So she is definitely up there where, but if I was out of the bunch, out of all the characters, because there's there's very few bad characters in Star Wars, um, Luke Skywalker definitely takes the bunch. All right, guys, again, uh, Redemption Bourbon here. Uh, it is made from Indiana. If you guys have a chance to go check out your local store whenever quarantine is over or whenever it is safe to, here's what the bottle looks like. Is right here. If I can get in front of the camera correctly, right there. Redemption Bourbon. Um, they have a whole bunch of different versions, um, different types of whiskeys, but I got the bourbon because bourbon is a little bit more my flavor. Um, but they have, you know, they have, uh, let's see, a high rye bourbon. They have a weeded bourbon, a 10 year barrel proof rye. Uh, you know, they have the high rye bur uh, uh, bourbon. They have, they have all kinds of different types. Um, as far as what's the most popular, the, the Redemption Bourbon is the most popular. And so that's why you'll see it the most. Um, but if, if you know what your type of whiskey is, uh, definitely reach out and see if you can find one. Um, I'm sure you can find it online as well. It's a very, very uh, smooth, sweet um, whiskey that has that definite uh, clear-cut bourbon flavor. So I definitely, definitely recommend that. Um, let's get back to some of these. Uh, I mentioned a big one there. Let's touch on some small ones as we kind of run through these a little bit. Uh, I will get to uh, the book in here in just a second because books are, I do the audiobooks. Um, and that's definitely something I love talking about. Uh, comic right now that I'm listening to, I mentioned Bounty Hunter um, uh, from, from the Star Wars Marvel run. It just started, there are about two or three issues in, and it's brilliant, it's really cool. Uh, it's different from anything else in Star Wars. They're doing Vader runs like crazy. Uh, I love all the side um, stories they tell. Um, you know, like Shattered Empire and the Kanan story or the Obi-Wan and Anakin story. But uh, the one that has always stood out to me over the last couple of years, that, that, and I've already mentioned her, um, that I think is an absolutely brilliant, 
brilliant idea and run, and they're starting a second run right now, that is Dr. Afra. I think that Dr. Afra, uh, very much alike uh, a Ahsoka Tano, or very much alike a Bubba Fett, right? There's She is so different from anything in Star Wars that we're seeing, and she, you know, or reading at this point, right? I do think that we'll see her series of her. I think that her series is um, the one that's coming next from the creator of, of Russian Doll. Uh, I hope so anyway, and I have my ideas for, for casting her, and maybe that's something I do on this show as well once that comes along. Um, but the character is just so different and interesting, the way she operates and who she operates with. It's, um, it's in the best way possible without using lightsabers and the Force and all that stuff. It's Star Wars. like It just feels like Star Wars when you're reading it. Um, she's a scumbag. She is. She, there's, there's no treading around that. She's an absolute scumbag. Uh, but the people she operates with are worse than her, which, which is why she's, you can uh, root for her. I love BT and triple zero. Uh, they are, they're some very interesting characters that would be even more interesting to be portrayed on, uh, on live action because they are essentially murder, murder droids. Uh, and the comics definitely don't hold back on that. And so if you're if you're looking for a comic book to read right now, you're a Star Wars fan, I definitely highly recommend picking up Dr. Aphra. Um, it is a, a very well done comic. That, like I said, they did the initial run, um, which took place between episode four and five, and the new one is between five and six. Uh, let's just put it this way. She is the only character to ever escape the grasp of Darth Vader, but she was also one of the few characters to ever work with Darth Vader um and have a working relationship and that if that's not enough for you to pick it up then i don't know what is so uh that is the comic that i'm i'm uh i'm reading currently one of the many uh favorite people in star wars i mentioned the species um but my favorite people slash you know clan if you will that is the mandalorians uh, i think the mandalorians of what they stand for and how they operate is just absolutely brilliant uh, they're the one the one people that i want to see more on screen of um, we're getting that kind of in Ma or the Clone Wars, excuse me, C.J. Manuel. We're seeing a lot more of them. We saw them in Rebels. Uh, I'm hoping that the Mandalorian at some point is leading us more towards that direction. Not sure if it will, but uh, they are the one thing in Star Wars that I've been wanting more of uh, outside of the Old Republic. Uh, we don't see enough of Mandalore. We don't see enough of that heritage. Um, they have a very, very interesting way of operating um, with the clans. It's a very samurai-esque you know, old school type of Western stuff that is, it's untouchable for them in Star Wars. Like, they're the only part of Star Wars that that happens, um, which makes it interesting. And and this is all uh, also a very interesting fact here. The Mandalorians we've seen in live action so far are, in fact, Mandalorians, which makes it even that much more interesting. You know, Boba Fett was a son of a clone, and Din Djarin is of another planet, and he was taken in by Vizsla's clan, um, Death Watch, which I'm, that's awesome, uh, taken in by Death Watch uh, from Clone Wars, which is even a cool, a cooler tie. I do think that, you know, by the time this comes out, we will have seen more of Mandalore in the final episode of the Clone Wars, but we'll see. Um, and so that's definitely my favorite people. Um, outside of, of a species, uh, as far as people go, Mandalorians are definitely up there. So um, I have a couple more here I want to touch on, guys. Um, I'll do just about two or three more uh, before we get out of here. Um, and so let's, I mentioned the book. Let's go ahead and touch on the book quickly. Uh, I have two. One is canon. One is non-canon now. So I consider Legends. Um, the Legends one um, is a combination because it's all one giant story. And that is the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn. The original Thrawn trilogy. Um, just just brilliant storytelling. Um, it's, it's hard to come by in these novels now. You know, Claudia Gray... Uh, has surpassed Timothy Zahn for myself in in Star Wars uh, um, novels and stuff like that. But what Timothy Zahn did back then with that story picking up from Return of the Jedi and telling something that just absolutely blew people's mind and creating such a popular, scary character in Thrawn coming after the Emperor and Vader, that's hard to do. Like, how do you top someone like the Emperor and Vader? You do that with Thrawn. And he's so precisely written, and it works so well in Star Wars. And so I can't give enough credit to that trilogy. If you have not read it, I highly recommend picking it up. It's called the Thrawn Trilogy. Um, 
Each of them have their own book names, uh, but you can easily find it by searching the Thrawn Trilogy online. And uh, they do have them on audiobook because I have them as well, and I've listened to them, and they're, they're, they're truly great. Um, as far as the canon one goes, there's a lot of them. There, there's uh, a lot of Star Wars books, um, you know, actually a lot of them that came right out of the gate that are truly great. Um, and the one that has always stood out to me is Lords of the Sith. Uh, Lords of the Sith is a book that has currently been untouched in the canon version of these novels. Um, it is the only one of its kind, and it follows... If you have not heard of it, I'll just give you a quick, quick excerpt of it. Palpatine and Vader crash land on a planet, and they have to fight their way off. That's all you need. That is all you need. And again, I did this on audio. Um, I listened to this on audio. It was my first ever canon book when the canon line was dropped. Um, and I picked it up right away. It was the one I was most excited for, and it did not disappoint. I'm looking for the author just to make sure I knew how. how yes, yes, correct. It is Paul S. Kemp is the author. Um, the cover is incredible, by the way, too. Uh, if, if my excerpt didn't get you guys interested, the cover should. Um, they crash land on a planet, and they have to fight their way off with the native people. Uh, that is, like, did you just imagine that as a movie? The Emperor and Vader fighting their way off a planet with nothing else but each other. And the catch here is, if you don't know, if you haven't read the books, the comics, the catch here is that their relationship is not as good as it seems. It's not. We know how the Sith operate, right? They operate in training one another. The Master trains the Apprentice to basically kill him. So at this point in time, they've gone so far with each other, Vader slash Anakin already thinks that he's powerful enough to become the next master. And their relationship's on rocky ground. And that is tested multiple times, not just through this book, but through the comics and through other novels. Um, but this one is definitely the highlight. Some close seconds for me is the Claudia Gray classic, uh, Lost Stars. A very, very different novel. Could be considered a young adult novel. It follows two people who grew up together. Um, childhood friends, uh, a um, boy and a girl, and they have this love for each other, but they go their separate ways. One of them starts working for the Empire, one of them starts working for the Resistance, or the, uh, the Alliance, excuse me, um, and it's actually set through all three trilogy movies, the original trilogy. So there are events, um, the, the characters, they are in the battles of episode four, five, and six. Yes, it is, it's truly an incredible feat to tell a story through three movies that are so beloved um, and have characters that you've never met before and it be that good. And so um, kudos to Claudia Gray for doing that because it's absolutely brilliant. A lot of great books have come out since then, but uh, those two have always stood out to me the most. And it's funny because I actually think, if I'm not mistaken, those might have been the first two I read. And so I'm, uh, I'll have to uh, find a way to find that out for you guys, but I believe those are the first two I read in the new canon line. Um, okay, so a few things here, small things. So video game. Uh, a lot of Star Wars video games, but my all-time favorite, the original Battlefront 2. Uh, I was a young, a young Padawan back then, and the original Battlefront 2 is um, is my all-time favorite game. I think it just it's it was kind of like the shell shock factor of it when it first came out, and so that one is kind of why it stood the time for me. I love the new the new Battlefronts. I love Jedi Fallen Order. Um, I can't wait to see what they do in the future. But the original Battlefront 2 has always been one that stood out to me the most. And I have, uh, I have two more here to kind of wrap this up. And they're two big ones. Two ones that I just recently talked about um, with a couple of buddies. And that is uh, my most valuable possession of Star Wars and my most uh, loving memory of Star Wars. Now, I explained this in that conversation that I had with them. My valuables, uh, I have a lot of valuables now, but I didn't have a lot. There was a gap in my life where I didn't have a lot of, of nice valuables, right? I have... You know, the poster or that lightsaber I built, or the, you can see, even see the holocron right above the lightsaber back there. Um, the movies, the books, the art of books, um, comics, like all this type of stuff, those are valuables, right? But I always go back to, because it was one of the most fun times of my life when I was a star, when I, you know, really started getting into Star Wars, was building Legos. Um, I was, I was a builder when I was a kid and I had, uh, I mean, without knowing how much I had, I probably had around two dozen sets of Star Wars Legos. Um, unfortunately being not just, not a rebellious, um, uh, younger teenager, but a kid who was like, Oh, I'm kind of cooler. 
Uh, I tossed the majority of them, not thinking that I would want them in the future. Uh, but I still have two of them, and I will make sure I put up some images for you guys to see them. Um, one of them is the Republic, the the Army of the Republic A6 Juggernaut, um, which I believe I have a picture up right now for you guys. I'll make sure I fade it in there. Um, and then the next one is Jabba's Barge. Uh, the two biggest Lego sets I ever had. Yes, I was never able to spend the money on a Death Star or the Millennium Falcon or anything like that just because they were too damn expensive. Um, but the A6 Juggernaut and the uh, and Jab Jabba's Barge are the two biggest Lego sets I ever had, and I made sure I kept them. They lasted all this time. They're currently in storage. You know, some pieces have fallen off here and there. It's funny because I actually have been thinking about finding manuals online to break them down and rebuild them just to have, you know, have at it and have some fun with it. Uh, but those are my, my prized valuables. And one day, maybe, you know, something might take that over. Uh, there might be an experience I have and someone gives me something or maybe, you know, this lightsaber back here just becomes more valuable to me over time um, because I did hand build that. But as of right now, because of the longevity and and my experience with Legos and how important Legos were to me years ago, um, those are my 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 most prized valuables. They are uh, so the A6 Juggernaut and uh, Jabba's barge um, with some pieces missing, but uh, definitely two things that hold I uh, I hold near and dear to my heart as far as Star Wars go. Uh, and my last thing that I'll mention here before we get out of here is. My, uh, my favorite memory for Star Wars. And now these two things are more recent. Um, they come in the last five or six years. And um, the first one I will mention, because it's a very close tie uh, or close race, I'll say. Uh, when I had this conversation the other day, I actually mentioned the second first, but I'll mention um, the other one first this time around. And it's probably for a lot of you out there, but it's the Force Awakens premiere. The night of the, the premiere of the Force Awakens, um, December 15th, 2015 or 14th excuse me it was Thursday night um I went to a 1 a.m showing of this movie and I was not tired obviously it was hyped up as all hell Star Wars was coming back reviews were out the movie has crushed JJ has done it um it's everything you want from the return of Star Wars uh not just not just that but there were at least I don't have an exact number but at least 15 of us that went together um and that's that's what makes the experience I had a group of 15 friends who we met up for dinner beforehand. We hung out. We were all, you know, conversing and, and chattering it up and having fun. And then we went to a 1 a.m. showing of The Force Awakens, and we could not be happier. It was one of the best times of my life. Um, it, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, it's one of the two Star Wars experiences I will hold near and dear to my heart forever. I will never forget that night. Um, the cheers the energy that was in the crowd, not just us, um, the excitement, the reactions, the applause afterwards, the applause as the Star Wars logo pops, or excuse me, the Lucasfilm logo pops up on the movie before the movie even started. I remember everything that happened. I know exactly where I was sitting. Um, it's something that I will always hold on to whenever I do these type of shows or if someone asks me. It's definitely the one thing I will mention outside of the second one, um, which and I know that if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll get this chance, uh, this opportunity at some point. But it's my first time ever walking into Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Galaxy's Edge is everything you want from a Star Wars fan. Um, it is, you're, you're literally stepping into Star Wars. Whether it's the music, whether the way that the sculptures are, whether it's the characters walking around like a Kylo, Chewbacca, or just the Stormtroopers. Um, walking into Savi's workshop to build the lightsaber. Or to the den of antiques, antiquities, excuse me, to to buy stuff, or walking and taking a picture under the Millennium Falcon, a life size Millennium Falcon. Um, and it's funny because I'm not even mentioning the rides. The rides are brilliant. Let's not let's not forget that. But it's the experience of going there and, and sitting down in a cantina and hearing a droid DJ the music, or buying blue milk, or you know whatever it may be, walking around it with a lightsaber in your hand, or you know, just hearing the music and these characters walk around you and it just, it feels like Star Wars. It is exactly what I know. And like I said, everyone will get this opportunity at some point to go. It is well worth your trip. It is worth everything. Um, I cannot uh, uh, praise it enough for what Disney has done with this land. Um, and I can't wait to see what they do with it in the future. Um, and I can't wait to go again. Like I, I'm, I'm biting at the bit just to go again 
and have fun and experience it once more time. And so if I were to, you know, if I were asked the question, what is your, what's the one thing from Star Wars that you mem remember it, I would have a hard time, uh, rolling one of these outside and only mentioning one. These are the two, the force awakens premiere and galaxy's edge. So those are my two memories. Um, but yeah, guys, there it is. My, uh, my first official episode of the whiskey Jedi podcast. Now, before I get here, I want to mention one more time. I'll take one last step here. The ice is kind of, uh, Melt away, made sure I finished the bourbon. Redemption bourbon, guys. Um, it, as it says on the back, um, distilled in the Indiana heartland. Uh, got it here locally. Um, I'm in the middle of California, the capital of Sacramento here, up top in the northern part. And I have no doubt you guys can probably find it in a, in a local grocery store around you guys. Um, definitely check it out and give this a thing a try. Like I mentioned, uh, they have multiple different versions, but I got the Redemption bourbon here. And it is definitely uh, everything that it promised to be. So I definitely recommend that. Um, and look, thank you guys for joining me. If you guys listened, if you guys watched, I really appreciate it. If you like the video, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button. Um, you know, the way that YouTube analytics work and audio analytics work, uh, likes shoot the video up the charts a little bit more. They get seen more as well as rates up on podcast platforms. So if you're on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Breaker, any of those, uh, please give me a rate. It can be good or bad. Give me your honest opinion because I'm looking to uh, continue this for a very long time and grow and uh, have fun with it. And uh, that's all going to be because of you guys. You know, if you want to give me some hard, hard criticism, I'm here to take it. Um, I'm here to talk Star Wars with you guys. And you know, if you have questions or comments or anything, please, please leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, whether it's about Star Wars, whether it's about a certain thing I said, whether it's about the whiskey, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, and as I mentioned, if you like the video, please hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm looking to grow and, and have fun with this in the future, and that definitely helps. So, again, guys, this is the Whiskey Jedi Podcast. My name is Jake Perlin. You guys can find me, excuse me, uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Qui-Gon Jake. That is with two ends, not one. Someone stole the end, uh, the one end Qui-Gon before me. So that is at Qui-Gon Jake. Um, you guys can, you know, hit me up there, instant message me, tweet at me with some questions. I'd love to have a conversation. Uh, this show will be out every Wednesday going forward, guys. Um, this is a special episode for Star Wars Day. I hope you guys have a great May the 4th. So check us, check myself out and the show out every Wednesday morning um on every podcast platform and youtube that you can possibly find so again thank you for joining me have a great may the 4th and may the force be with you